<laughs> See Mrs. Jones. Standing at the head of her table, she spoons fat strawberries into crystal dishes. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The faces of her guests are laughing in the mirror. She stops and watches them without expression. The night air is so still the candles barely flicker. See Mrs. Jones. Painting Mrs. Jones by Rachel Joyce. With Lindsay Duncan as Jennifer Jones, James Lawrenson as Ian, and David Antrobus as Tom. <laughs> Who would ring now? Just leave it. The last thing. Oh, Ian, it might be someone important. Well, this time. Would you all excuse me? <laughs> if it's for me, I'm not at home. Don't be silly, you never are. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer Jones. Hi. Hello? It's Tom. Tom? I thought you were expecting me. I'm sorry, I think you have a wrong number. Uh, Ian said I should ring. My husband? It's a bad time, isn't it? I'll call back. Another day. Would you like his office number? You could speak to his secretary in the morning. But it's you I need to speak to, Mrs Jones. Me? Yes. I'm a friend of Charles. Is this a bad time? What do you want? I'm phoning about the painting. Oh, the portrait. Yes. Mr. Jones said something about wanting it for your anniversary, a party or something. Yes, of course. Now I remember. So we should fix a time soon to meet. Mrs. Jones, are you still there? I'm very sorry, Tom. It is a bad time. Could we speak again tomorrow? It's suffocating. Oh, another success, darling. Did you think? Didn't you? Oh, I'm too hot, that's all. <laughs> Hugo was drunk. Hugo always is, these days. Well, even Mary. She seemed different, I thought. Oh, Mary? She was watching him. Oh, of course she was. No, she looked... As if she wasn't there. As if she was bored by us all. Mary? Oh, I probably imagined it. So, who was on the phone? What? Was it one of your charity ladies? Oh, that. Wrong number. Huh? He'd gone for ages. He was foreign. Couldn't understand me. Oh. And then I needed some fresh air. Don't forget the light, will you? See Mr. Jones. Relaxing on the patio, he sees a wasp hovering above his empty glass. The air smells sweet, gorged on the hot day. His wife sits beside him, staring into the dusk. The fish has been gutted, stuffed with herbs and wrapped like a small gift in silver foil. Mr. Jones lifts his glass, turns it suddenly, and traps the wasp wriggling inside. I can't work the thing. I'm not frightened of it. There's a difference. Darling. You keep replacing my things when they aren't even broken. Oh, I still don't know why you'd need your own life. Have you finished with this? So, anyway, what did he say? Tom, he said... Oh, I don't know. I probably misheard. What? He told me he was a friend of Charles. Well, he is. Ian. Now, actually, he knows Penny better. The Rutlands? Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't mention her. I thought... We're getting the old tonic. Tell me again, who is it tonight? 
Oh, Ian. God, something smells good. Good. How do you do it every time? Mm -hmm. He's a rising talent, Tom, so Penny says his father was at school with Charles. Of course. Paints classical with a modern edge. And what does that mean? <laughs> oh, I know. It, it was Penny's idea. She's very pleased with hers. I've seen it. It's, it's extraordinary. I mean, I mean the likeness. You don't need a painting of me. You see me every day. Anyway, you don't even like art. Not Are you upstairs? Can you get it? Oh, please. Last. After the door. Hello. Mum. Hello? Who are you? Hello? I said I'd ring you back, but I've been away. We should meet. How about Tuesday? I'm at the studio, so give me a ring. I got curious. You know me. I thought I'd go by bus. Oh, you don't want to go all the way over there. It's to do with the light, that's what he said. <laughs> What's wrong with our light? Anyway, it's years since I've been on a bus. And it's, it's too hot. It'll take over an hour. I'll just sit and think. Oh, at least phone the minicab. It's years since I've just sat. I thought. See Mrs. Jones, sitting on her crowded bus. It smells of heat and sweat. It runs in a trickle down the cheek of the man beside her. His leg presses against hers. She wishes that she had worn gloves. Hello? Hi. Tom, this is Mrs. Jones. I know. Come on up. Jennifer Jones, what are you doing? See the artist. Standing at the top of the stairs, he is a silhouette against the window. Sunlight pours around him, almost too bright for her to look. But Mrs. Jones does. She has to. The shape of his hand reaches out to take hers. The fingers are warm, delicate like a girl's. Hi. Tom. He moves his head and she sees his face. Mrs. Jones stares longer than she should, longer than is polite. He wipes his forehead and leaves a streak of paint there. I'm sorry. It's just your face. It's... I'm so sorry. How rude. Am I covered in paint? You look the typical artist. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be staring. It's on your hand, anyway. So it is. Now we're equal. Come inside. Tom, you know, I have an appointment at five. I worry when I'm late, so I really must leave you at 4.30 promptly. Do you want a beer, Mrs Jones? Me? Uh, no, thank you. No, I never... Oh, it's so hot today. It's actually the hottest August since 1976, so they said on the news, the way they do. Mm. Mind you, we had it hotter in Riyadh, of course. It's good. Where you're standing. Yes, we lived there for a while after... I enjoyed it, actually. More than that. I wasn't sure at first. People go on about how different it is, but I like that. And sometimes it's a relief to be something else. It's very exotic, Riyadh, you know, in spirit. I'm sorry, is there something wrong? <laughs> you could go on and on painting a face and never be satisfied. Because a face is never the same. From day to day, it changes. Minute to minute. So, four sittings are all I allow myself these days. I suppose you have to stare, being the artist. I'm just not used to being looked at, that's all. <laughs> I know it makes some people uncomfortable. They know I'm watching, but they don't know what I'm seeing. I've no secrets, Tom. I hope you won't be disappointed. The first visit, I sketch you, Mrs. Jones. I'm trying to catch something about you. The little clues in your hands, or the way you hold your mouth. 
finding you out. Then, when I think I've got to know you, I throw it all away and start again with my paints. Have you started? One last thing. I never show the painting while we're working. It has to be mine until it's finished. Well, I'll stand here, shall I? And do you tell me if it's right, if I'm doing the right thing. What a lot of traffic. I somehow imagined there'd be a garden. Lots of trees. I thought you'd need the silence to paint. There are lots of trees where we live. It's almost like the country. Try leaning your head on your hand. M more towards me. Yes, of course, I see. Like this, you mean? Oh. Yes. That feels much better, more relaxed, I suppose, than my just standing here. Am I talking too much? This isn't working. Let's think of something else. I... I'm just slightly concerned, Tom, that... I think my husband might... What I'm trying to say is that perhaps this view behind me is not what we had in mind. I, I don't know. The flyover, the buses. We imagine something more elegant. We're rather traditional in our tastes. Do you mind my saying that? I can put in any background, anything you like. A seascape, velvet drapes, whatever. I'm always changing things. You mean you add what isn't there? I think I take away what shouldn't be. What do you think about the jacket? It's an old favourite. My husband bought it for me years ago. He always says he could never lose me in this. It doesn't seem very <laughs> you. Gold buttons, tailored, too red. I don't know. It's up to you. Well, it was too hot anyway. I know. What about that? You mean me to sit there? I think it'll work. But it's an old car seat. Trust me. Is this really going to work? Uh, you realise I may never get up again. I almost lived in that car. An old Buick. I sold it for scrap in the end, but I kept the front seat. I've eaten, slept, done everything in it. Even lost my virginity. Where I'm sitting? Does that shock you? Was it meant to? Sometimes I sit there, not doing anything, just thinking about whatever, until I fall asleep. Don't you worry about wasting time? <laughs> of course you don't. You're young. I like your drawings, Tom. They're very kind. You must like people. I spend all my time with people. Organising charity functions, hosting dinners. I'm good at it, I know that. And yet I wonder if I really care for people. Whereas you, sat in here, it's as if you've come to know them, really know them, I mean. And so you like them. Is that true, would you say? Tom? I'm sorry, I think I moved. I shouldn't say these things, you hardly know me. I always allow myself to fall a little in love when I'm painting. I can never help it. See Mrs. Jones, sitting back in the leather seat that's so worn it has faded. She rests her hands on her knees, her fingers uncurling. A strand of hair slips out of place and dangles, unnoticed, like a pencil line along her cheek. She looks to the wall and sees nothing. So lost is she in her thought. <laughs> Mrs. Jones. Tom? You're counting. <laughs> Didn't you know? Am I? <laughs> <laughs> It's strange, isn't it, where one's head goes when one just sits still. I think it started with my planning a menu for a dinner party on Saturday. Yes, that's right, I was trying to remember if they've had my salmon terrine or would I give them asparagus, I couldn't decide. <laughs> my head went blank for a moment, so I started counting asparagus chips. You kept starting again. It's what I do in my head. I don't like it when I'm not busy. So I can't. Anything, everything. 
I'm hanging out the washing, so I'll count it. And when I've nearly finished, and I don't know what will happen next, I'll count the blue things, or the hand wash things, or I'll multiply them by seven, by thirteen, until something else happens. And I can think of that. Don't you count things? One never knows what's normal until one asks, and of course, that's not the sort of thing one asks. So one never really knows. I don't count things. There's something about sitting here with you, watching me. It makes me need to talk. Not about the normal things, but everything. Sometimes I feel so unknown. Mrs. Jones, your knee is showing. My knee? Oh, I'm sorry. I think it works. <sighs> there. We should stop. Oh. I can't do any more now. So, same time next week? No one said that to me in years. <laughs> Come on, I'll help you up. Oh. <laughs> Tom, do you believe in fate or in things we don't yet know? When we first spoke on the phone that night, I thought... Oh, it's silly. I thought somehow you knew my son. Your son? I know. It's impossible. Have you ever rung me and not spoken when my answer machine... Of course you haven't. You miss him, don't you? Uh, yes, Tom. Yes, I do. You seem to know so much about me. How is it you know more than you should? See Mrs. Jones. Running barefoot, she jumps cracks in the pavement. Her shoes in one hand and a bag of cherries in the other. Her jacket, cadmium red, is tied to her waist and the buttons glint in the afternoon sun. She stops at a line of railings and dips her hand into the bag. Then, over each spike, she hangs two perfect cherries. One for you, one for you, and one for you. <laughs> Mrs. Jones steps back and laughs. You didn't like him, did you? Tom! Mm, I could tell. He's very young, that's all. Well, that's what Penny said. Did she? I thought I'd come with you next time. To Tom's? Hmm. Watch the artist at work. It's very dull. You wouldn't like it. How do you know? Anyway, we haven't fixed another date. You know how difficult it is. Deacing things. I'm just too busy. Or oh, maybe with four-wheel drive. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, darling, what are you doing to me? What is it? It's coffee. You've given me coffee. I couldn't have. <laughs> You'd think she'd know after 25 years. <laughs> Sorry, would you excuse me? I just need some air. What's happening to me? Darling. <laughs> it was only a joke. Oh, I know. I oh, know. You do get upset, don't you? I wish they'd all go home. You're right. Beautiful night. Isn't it? I was trying to find the plough, but it's so long I've forgotten how it goes. It's there, look. Where? No, just follow that one down, see, and then across. In? Hmm? Am I still attractive, do you think? Oh, darling, what a question. No, but am I? Of course you are. Now come inside. See Mrs. Jones. Lying awake, she counts blue grapes in the wallpaper, then divides them by six and multiplies them again by three. She watches her husband sleeping beside her, slightly too hot in his pressed pajamas, and feels the urge to blow on his chin. 
to tickle his nose, to do something for once that isn't normal. Yeah. What's up? Nothing. Yeah. I've got shaving foam on my ear again. I'm just happy. It's a nice day. Your yeah. toast is there. Now, you should put some slippers on. You'll catch cold. Ian, it's 70 degrees in the shade. No, it, it's 75, actually. 74.5. Ian. Well, look at the thermometer. I'm just looking at the thermometer. You, you can't argue with science. Ian, stop fussing. <laughs> You've been out gardening. Later I will. Come here. Looks like a weed's got stuck in your hair. It's a sweet pea. I put it there. What for? Because it's summer. I wanted to. What's wrong this morning? Oh, I don't know. You just don't look like you. Oh, two cappuccinos. Um, croissant. Butter, jam... And a cherry flapjack. Why on earth not? I think we could sit on the floor. <clears throat> you haven't had breakfast yet, have you, Tom? <laughs> no, of course you haven't. You're an artist. You see? You're not the only person who can read minds. Oh, yes, it's my theory, Tom. I've been thinking it out all week. The reason you're an artist, the reason you paint so well... Do you take sugar? Um, is that you understand people. But, you see, I do, too. I spend my life noting the little details that would make people comfortable. Shall I move these papers? Oh, I'd hate to get crumbs on them. Yes, sure. That's why you fall in love, I imagine. Because you understand. I'm sure I would. I'm afraid I bottled it for you. <laughs> Instinct, I'm sorry. Want some of that? Just don't go painting me with jam on my nose. <laughs> Artists never eat, do they? And I spend my life entertaining. We're a good match. You're looking at me again. I'd forgotten how you look. You seem different, Mrs. Jones. Jennifer, please. <laughs> Since our last meeting, Tom, I have had the most extraordinary week. On Monday, I went to the park and I paddled. On Tuesday, I hired a moped. <laughs> Um, on Wednesday. What did I do on Wednesday? I made popcorn. On Thursday, I danced in my garden. On Friday, I sunbathed. Naked. At the weekend, my husband was at home and I came to my senses. What do you mean, different? You're not as I remembered. I get the feeling my husband's going to be shocked. I'm right, aren't I? <laughs> Poor Ian. I haven't dared mention the car seat. He took the red jacket badly enough. <laughs> He's planning an anniversary party, the official unveiling of my portrait. I can just see their faces as they gobble up their volivant, raise their glasses. Ladies and gentlemen, my wife. And there I am, with jam on my nose, <laughs> a sweet pea in my hair, looking daft for posterity. <laughs> And he was so keen on his red jacket. One day, someone is going to find your painting in their attic and blow off the cobwebs and think, oh, no, we don't like her. And that will be it. They'll throw me away. All my life will have meant nothing. Who will remember me? What are you doing? Changing it. You see, I'm not so conventional, after all. <laughs> I keep having this dream. I had it again last night, or the night before. But I think you'll like it. It will appeal to your sense of the subversive. We're hosting a party. Everyone's in the garden. There's a marquee. A big white one with a flag at the top that just flops because the air is so still. I'm handing out drinks, moving from one group to another, elegant, smiling, the perfect hostess. My hair is done, my nails are painted, I smell of gardenia, but... You're wearing no dress. 
and I've laced their drinks. <laughs> How do you know all these things? I have missed you. I've often thought about being here and the things I might say. <laughs> One year, we made mince pies with Mummy, only we stuffed them with cotton wool. And at the party on Christmas Eve, we always had one for the village. I remember so clearly handing one of these mince pies to the vicar. Did you make them yourself, he said. <laughs> he ate the whole thing. He was too polite not to. I loved a joke when I was young. Charles is the same. He gets it from me. He left university with the first. He could have done anything. There were so many offers. But he's a writer now for a satirical magazine. You see, he's another artist like you. Ian hates it, of course. What magazine? Oh, there goes your knife. What are you doing now? Packing out the bits where I'm a good mother. So, you lost touch with him. Or you've forgotten what he does now. So what? There's more to it. You'll be fine. We survive. What? I did. It's no big deal. I never knew her. But... Uh, don't you... I think it's extraordinary that we've both... Don't you think... It could almost be fate. She must have seen my ugly face and got scared. Changed her mind. You were adopted? She walked out. Left me to her mum. Don't look sorry for me. I told you. I'm fine. You know, you have so many choices when you're young. So you go along a certain road thinking you can always change your mind. And then... Before you know it, there's nothing else. My life's about planning a menu, counting the washing. So maybe she misses you, your mother. I ran up to this woman in the street once and hugged her legs. Wouldn't let go. I was so sure it was her. They had to drag me off. It's too late now. All I'm saying, Tom, is that maybe... She misses you. There, that's it. All done for today. I, I thought we might go on another hour or two. We started so late. Well, the breakfast. I mean, I have nothing planned. I'm afraid I can't. But I cancelled a committee meeting. I have another appointment. Of course you're busy. How silly of me. Bringing you breakfast. Look, I told you, I don't need mothering. Mothering? You think I'm mothering you? I can't make up for Charles. You think I'm... What am I doing? Imagining you understand. You're a boy, for heaven's sake. How could he possibly understand? <sighs> Newspapers, they depress me. Hmm? Sitting here, reading all about life. We should be doing things. Something up? No, no. Darling, I like my Sunday paper. I've always liked my Sunday paper. It's what I do on a Sunday. But maybe we should do something else. For once. It's years since we've taken a boat trip. Mm-hmm. Oh, what's the point? You're not listening again. Oh, you're going on a boat trip. You're just repeating what I'm saying. <laughs> don't think I don't know all your tricks. My tricks? Yes. Don't think I don't know them. Darling, I wouldn't dream of it. Jennifer, stop it. I'm not doing anything. You're giving me your look. I want to connect with you, Ian. I want to learn new things. I want to be excited. What's got into you? OK. Am I right in thinking you're not here? Jennifer Jones. Tom? See Mrs. Jones, sitting with her husband at different ends of the settee. 
The sun shines onto the television and he squints to watch. Staring at her tapestry, she is pretending to sew. The needle shines like a streak of silver. It falls from her fingers and lies unretrieved on the carpet. I hate cricket. What's that? Stretching her fingers, she looks out into the hall. Still, the phone doesn't ring. <laughs> yes! <sighs> Where are you going? Wait a minute. <clears throat> Hi. Tom? It's me, Jennifer. I'm sorry about last week. I don't know what came over me. It doesn't matter. Well... So, um, will I see you again? I think, um... Don't you think we should stop? What about next Tuesday? No, I can't do next Tuesday. It's Ian's lunch for the partners. It's an annual thing. I couldn't miss it. Definitely not. That's a shame. Tom, I have to tell you... I'm starving. I haven't had breakfast all week. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still there? Of course. I'm glad I rang. You know. It's a shame. About Tuesday. Darling, who are you talking to? <sighs> but yesterday you were fine. What, what will I say to the others? Tell them I'm ill. <laughs> no one misses the lunch. <sighs> Pass me my dressing gown, will you? <clears throat> you know, you've lost weight. I doubt it. You having an affair? <laughs> Don't look like that. It's a joke. A joke? This is what Charles says to Penny. It always makes her laugh when he says that, apparently. Why? Has Penny had an affair? No, that's not... Well, no, no, of course she hasn't. Darling, why, why don't you just come for the starters? Ian, you won't even notice I'm not there. Lift your head a little. That's it. I was attractive once. I wish you painted me then. I had several boyfriends. Every Saturday night I'd escape out of my bedroom window. <laughs> Ian was a family friend. Peter Clayton. You'd have liked him. He took me dancing every Friday. Oh, such places. The Ritz once. Then he met Mummy for tea one day and he was sick all over the hallway. I loved Ian, of course. I still do. Love him. And less than a year later, there was Charles. He was such a good baby. He never cried once. He won't be any trouble, the midwife said. He's a good boy. Only they wouldn't let me hold him. Ian was right, of course. People would have talked. It was a small village. Even though we'd moved away. They'd have found out. And I couldn't bear Mummy to know. We like Ian, she was always saying. In that way. He did so well getting his job abroad, though she hated him then for taking me. But he thought it would do us good to start again. And I wasn't really in a position to. It was an opportunity for us both. He's always been good to me. We had nothing when we arrived. At his interview, the manager said, what do you see yourself doing in 10 years time? Your job, said Ian. And in five years, he was. And people were always saying to me, when are you two going to have? But Ian said, in that way he has that it had taken too much out of me the first time and he was right of course but I miss him a woman needs a child and Ian knew that I needed 
to love my son. I see Charles all the time. He's haunted me all these years. He's everywhere. Every country we've lived. In other people's children. Holding my empty hand. It's funny. It's the middle of summer. The garden is so full of things. Bursting with heat. And yet everything about me seems so grey. Inside me, it's like rain on a slate roof inside me. I have a beautiful home, lots of friends. I'm on committees for the hospital, neighborhood watch, bridge club, oh, X, Y, and Z. But all the time I feel as if I'm not really there. I think that in me there's so much that's sad and if it ever came out no one would know what it was about. They wouldn't recognize me. Paint me as I really am, Tom. Paint me grey. Everyone's saying yes. We've even had a few cards. I thought you'd be pleased. Do we really need a party this year, Ian? We always have a party. We cannot not have a party. No, they, they, they all expect it, and, and this year we've got the portrait to top it all. Of course we need a party. I suppose. It's your crowning glory. Don't do that. What? It hurts. <laughs> so, how's it going, the portrait? Fine. You, you never mention it. There's nothing to say. Must be nearly finished. Ian, it might not be what you're expecting. Well, I'm open-minded, you know me. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. He has a way of seeing things that might not be ours. <laughs> you really don't like him, do you? See Mrs. Jones. Rushing to the studio, she laughs with excitement. Her hair falls over her sunned shoulders in curls. She looks up at the blue of the sky and waves to a bird. The sun burns into her eyes. It is only as its image fades that she sees the note pinned to the door. Dear Mrs. Jones, sorry, I've had to cancel. Give me a ring. Because it's finished. Finished? Yes, I looked at it after our last sitting and I realised what was missing. So, now it's done. So soon? I'll get it to you next week, for your anniversary party. Tom, would you come? Please. I'm just a little thrown, that's all. I don't know. I'm pretty busy. I don't suppose I could pop by, just to look. I could be in the area whenever. No, it's not your way. I must respect the artist, of course. I have to trust you, that's what you said. And I do, Tom, I do. Yeah, yeah. You said something else, too, about... Um, about falling in love. I wonder... Did you, Tom? With me? Darling! It's here. Ian? It brought your portrait. Just in time. Painting? Where? Happy anniversary, darling. Where's Tom? Is he here? No, it was delivered. It needed two people to carry it. I couldn't believe how he heavy... He didn't bring it himself. 
You all right? Oh, th there's an envelope here for you. Do you want it? it? It's stuck onto the paper. Give it to me. Oh, hang on a minute. What's wrong? Stop it. Hmm? Stop looking at me. I'm absolutely fine. <laughs> so what does Tom say? Nothing. Why should he? With regards, Tom. And there's an invoice. Nothing else. What'd you expect? Do you want to help me? No. Thank you. How exciting. I can't wait. I'm warning you, Ian, it may not be what we expect. You mustn't be offended. Our first work of art. I don't look. Really? There. there we go. You look for me. Oh, darling. Is it terrible? It's wonderful. I just... So, you, he's got you exactly. Has he? Oh, yes, exactly. Look. The woman I married. Darling? You all right? I, I put out the crisps. I, I couldn't find those glass bowls you used, so I got our cereal ones instead. And now people are just helping themselves from the fridge. <laughs> Hugo's drinking from a mug. I think he quite likes it. Well, and, and Penny loves your terrine. She's cut it into slices just the way you do. It's going well. Darling? Um, the, the, the portrait has been a, a big success. Everyone thinks so. We all think he's caught you exactly. Oh, what a shame we never met. Well, I'd better get back now and, and socialise. But we're waiting for you. Jennifer? See Mrs. Jones in the dead of night. Standing in front of her portrait, she takes her last look. A figure smiles back at her from an upright chair, hands folded, nails painted, and dress conservatively cut. Dominating it all, the gold buttons glint like cheap baubles from her fitted red jacket. Mrs. Jones wraps the portrait in its bubble wrap and brown paper and wipes her eyes. Leaning it against the wall, she looks back a moment at the room. Then, opening the front door, she steps out into the rain. See Mrs. Jones. In Painting Mrs. Jones by Rachel Joyce, Lindsay Duncan was Jennifer Jones, James Lawrenson, Ian, and David Antrobus, Tom. The director was Jeremy Mortimer. <laughs>